Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys, Stacy with me. Shalom, shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Sabbath day. Okay. What I've done is gone in and looked at the dozen or so classes that we have on the Sabbath day and pulled out the best, most important verses from all of those classes. So in this one, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about the Sabbath day. Sort of like a one, two, three, this is what you're supposed to do class? Yeah, what you're supposed to do, when is it? We're going to be talking about the importance of the Sabbath day. We're going to be talking about when it was instituted and how it was instituted. We're going to be talking about the rules of the Sabbath day. We're going to be talking about the blessings that you get by keeping the Sabbath day, as well as the curses if you don't keep the Sabbath day. We're going to be talking about who changed the Sabbath day and why people celebrate Sabbath days on Sundays and Saturdays and other days according to the Gregorian calendar. And we're even going to talk about some of the prophecies associated with the Sabbath day. So a one-stop shop for all Sabbath day information. All things Sabbath day. Okay, let's go. Now, one of the first things we'll want to do is come over and look in Exodus chapter 20, which starts the book of the covenant right there with the Ten Commandments. And we see that the Sabbath day is actually the fourth commandment. Mm-hmm. And when you're reading the Ten Commandments, you'll notice that out of all ten, the, the Fourth Commandment or the Sabbath day has the most instruction associated with it. Right. If you would, go ahead and read verses 8, 9, and 10. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So here we're learning that it is actually a day of rest. Yes. And you see a few of the rules associated with the Sabbath day, but we're going to come back to the rules. Here we want to just establish the fact that it was a commandment of the Lord to keep this day. Mm-hmm. To keep this day holy. To keep this day set apart from the rest of the other days. Absolutely. And when we jump over to chapter 31, we see even more importance to this day. If you would, read verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that do it sanctify you. So what this is saying to me is that not only is the Sabbath day a sign, but it is necessary for us to know who the Lord is. Yeah, and that it is supposed to always, because it says throughout your generations, to always be kept. Yeah, so we're never supposed to stop keeping the Sabbath day. Right, never. Now, we see that repeated over in Ezekiel chapter 20. If you would, read verse 12. Moreover also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. So, once again, he's telling us that keeping the Sabbath day is necessary in order to know who the Lord is. Right. Mm -hmm. So, can one go as far as to say if you don't keep the Sabbath day that you don't know the Lord? Well, I think scripture supports that if you do not keep the Sabbath day, if you do not observe it, that you will not know him. Well, I think that kind of goes for all of the commandments. Like when you read over in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 4, where it's talking about those who don't keep the commandments. If you would, go ahead and read that. He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Now, I believe that adds more importance to the Sabbath day because even though John and Ezekiel are saying the same thing, Ezekiel is putting the emphasis like Moses did on the Sabbath day. Right. Where John is, you could take that he's talking about all the commandments. Ezekiel is specifically talking about the Sabbath day. And he says the same thing in verse 20. If you read, read that. And hollow my Sabbath day. That they may be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So, if you don't keep the Sabbath day, you don't know the Lord. 
You also see the Sabbath day mentioned in Leviticus 23, which are the statutes. Okay. Could you explain what the statutes are? The statutes deal with the feast. That's right. And the difference between a statute and a commandment is that the way I think about it is breaking the commandment has a punishment schedule. Like what we read over in Exodus chapter 31 and verse 14, where it says that if you don't keep the Sabbath day, you should be put to death. Yeah, not only if you don't keep it, but it also says if you defile it. If you don't do it right. Right. That's the commandment. Now, the statutes, on the other hand, are how we establish that you are a part of a community. And just like here in America, if you don't abide by the commands or the laws of our country, you may end up in prison. But if you don't obey the statutes of our country, we're just going to kick you out. But the point that I want to make here is just like the mandatory feast days that you read about in Exodus chapter 23, which are the statutes, you also see there listed in verse 12, the Sabbath day. So the Sabbath day is not only a commandment, but it is a statute as well. Right, right. It's included as a set apart day for us. By commandment and statute. Now, while we're talking about the importance of the Sabbath day, let's jump over and let's look in the book of Jasher. Okay. In fact, we're going to jump all the way down to the 70th chapter of the book of Jasher or Yasher. And we're going to see a request being made by Moses to the Pharaoh. If you would, go ahead and read verse 43 and 44. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, I pray thee, my Lord, I have come to seek a small request from thee. Turn not away, my face empty. And Pharaoh said unto him, Speak. Now, you understand that this is what's going on while the children of Israel is still in captive in Egypt. Right. This is before the Passover that we read about in Exodus chapter 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, let there be given unto thy servants, the children of Israel, who are in Goshen, one day to rest therein from their labor. So here it is. Moses is actually asking Pharaoh, who has now the children of Israel enslaved or in bondage for a Sabbath day. Right. A day of rest. Right. If we read on to 47, I think it would um, further explain Go ahead. the day. To you, all the children of Israel, thus says the king, for six days you shall do your work and labor, but on the seventh day you shall work and shall not perform any work. Thus shall you do all the days as the king and Moses, the son of Bathia, have commanded. So here is the actual proclamation of the Pharaoh. Yeah, but can we say that the Pharaoh did not do this? It was the father who might have worked through him and put the words in his mouth, but it was the father who set apart these days. Is that right? Well, it actually says that in verse 49, if you want to read that. Okay. 49. For this thing was from the Lord to the children of Israel. For the Lord has begun to remember the children of Israel to save them for the sake of their fathers. So your understanding here is that the first thing that our father did when he started to remember the children of Israel who were enslaved at the time was to reinstitute the Sabbath day. Right. He gave them the Sabbath day first. Mm -hmm. So here we are. The children of Israel are now currently in bondage and we're waiting for that marriage supper with the lamb once again. Some are even waiting for the new exodus of Babylon or the current state of Egypt that we're in now. So it shouldn't be too surprising that the importance of the Sabbath day is once again being recognized by his people. Yeah, I'm seeing that the Sabbath day is now a hot topic. A lot of people are talking about what's going to happen and how we're supposed to... Um, Follow the Sabbath day. That's because just like he did back there in about 1400 BC, the same process is going on now where his people will once again start to keep the Sabbath day first, proving, like we read in Exodus chapter 31, 
that they have the sign of the father and that they are his people. And then and only then those people who obey the Sabbath day can start to look forward to the marriage supper. Yeah, because we find throughout scripture that everything seems to be with the father is done like within a circle. It goes around and around and around and everything comes back again and does the same thing over again. It's like he follows the same path continuously. Yeah, not only that, but in those ancient books like Genesis and Exodus, he gave us a living parable so that we could see how things worked in the past, knowing that they would work in the future as well. Well, we're seeing how important the Sabbath day is to our future. In fact, when we jump over to Clarence Larkin's chart on the 7,000 years of human history, we see how the Sabbath day is a representation of that millennial reign that we are expecting. Right. This goes along with what we were just talking about and the marriage supper, which would take place at the beginning of the millennial reign. Well, that millennial reign is the representation of the seventh day or the Sabbath day. And by keeping the Sabbath day, we take on the sign or the mark that we intend on living through that millennial reign. So the Sabbath day has a prophetic element as well. Now, let's jump over to the book of Jubilees because it also talks about the Sabbath day in a few of his chapters. Let's look in chapter one as it's talking about Moses and how he received the covenant there in Mount Sinai. And we know today that obedience to those covenants are associated with our blessings that we are to receive. Mm -hmm. That goes along with that Leviticus chapter 26 stuff. But if you would start in verse eight. And they will eat and be satisfied and they will turn to strange gods to gods which cannot deliver them from all of their tribulation, and their witness shall be heard for a witness against them. For they will forget all my commandments, all that I commanded them, and they will walk after the Gentiles, and after their uncleanliness, and after their shame, and will serve their gods, and these will prove unto them an offense, and a tribulation, and an affliction, and a snare. So even though our father has commanded us to do so, he went on to tell us by way of the scripture how and what would happen to us when we started to forget the covenant. Right. If you would read verse nine. And many will perish and they will be taken captive and fall into the hands of the enemy because they have forsaken my ordinances and my commandments and the festivals of my covenant and my Sabbaths. And my holy place, which I have hollowed for myself in their midst, and my tabernacle, and my sanctuary, which I have hollowed for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it, and that it should dwell. So, one of the reasons why we are in this current state now, where the Gentiles or the pagans of the world are humiliating our father's children, is because we forgot the Sabbath day. Yeah, one of the things that shouts out to me is by us forgetting these things, that we will walk as the Gentiles walk, that we will walk after the things that they believe in, and that's exactly what we're doing. Absolutely. And you see some of the results of that, if you would, read verse 12 and 13. And I will hide my face from them, and I will deliver them into the hands of the Gentile for captivity, and for a prey, and for devouring. And I will remove them from the midst of the land, and I will scatter them amongst the Gentiles. Well, here is the current state that we're in, scattered amongst the Gentiles. Removed from the land, yeah. Definitely removed from the land, and here where we are, it appears as though there are a thousand to one Gentiles for every person that actually keeps the commandments. Look where it says, I will deliver them into the hands of the Gentiles for captivity. Yeah, and you remember in other places in the scripture where it says those who hate you will have rule over you? Correct. This is the result of forgetting the Sabbath day along with the other feast days and the covenant. Mm -hmm. And look at verse 13. And they will forget all my law and my commandments and my judgments 
and will go astray as to new moons and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees and ordinances. Again, this is our Father in his infinite wisdom letting us know that this day would come. Yeah. But just like the children of Israel back there with Moses, he also has a plan for our salvation. And turns out remembrance of the Sabbath day is a part of that plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people, and I don't want to get off, um, would say, no, coach, the Messiah is his plan, and now we don't have to do the Sabbath day. They'll try to say something like, the Messiah got rid of the Sabbath day or something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's actually see who it was that got rid of the Sabbath day. It wasn't the Messiah, because when you look in Matthew chapter 5, you see that he not only kept the law, but he instructed us to be obedient to the law and keep it as well and even go on to teach it. Right. Mm -hmm. If you would, read verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, a lot of those people who want to say that he did away with the law and the Sabbath day don't want to hear from this verse at all. Mm -mm. Because look at 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And like we saw over there in the other books that the Sabbath day is supposed to be kept for forever. Right. Throughout all of your generations. Right. Well, look at verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So our Messiah not only wanted us to keep the Sabbath day, but he wanted us to teach others to keep the Sabbath day. Right. Well, that's the purpose of this video. So let's go on. Let's jump over to 1 Maccabees chapter 1. This is where we hear about Antiochus Epiphanes, who a lot of people recognize as a representation of the future Antichrist or the future lawless one. Well, one of the benefits to the book of Maccabees is we can see how the events of the past will be a part of our future. Like we were talking about the living parable of the children of Israel mm -hmm. in Egypt. Well, we also have a living parable in the book of Maccabees because these same things will be happening again. Right. If you would, read verse 41. Then King Atticus sent word throughout his entire kingdom that everyone should act like one people, giving up their local customs. The Gentile nations all readily accepted the king's command. Many Jews also willingly adopted the king's religion. They sacrificed to idols and violated the Sabbath. So here you have a representation of the Antichrist doing away with the Sabbath day. That makes me think of how uh, the new thing is how we all should be one. How, you know, the New World Order thing where we all should be one people, have one religion. And, of course, it's not the Father's religion, right. but it's the Pope's religion. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, before we get to talking about him, let's look down in verse 45. He banned the regular practices of entirely burned offerings, sacrifices, and drink offerings in the sanctuary. He banned the observances of Sabbaths and feast days. So it's not the father who created the Sabbath day who has a desire to take it away. It's the pagan leaders of the world who want to do away with the Sabbath day. Right. It's not the father who confused us so that we don't know what Sabbath day is, what Sabbath day. It's these pagan, as you said, leaders who, who has us in confusion now. If we jump ahead in time to the days of the Emperor Constantine, we'll see that he had a similar act. Mm -hmm. He wasn't given the power of Antiochus Epiphanes to kill the Jews who were keeping the Sabbath day, but he went on to actually change it. Now, this is from a website called worldlastchance.com. If you would, read that paragraph there. One of the greatest frauds in the history of the world was perpetrated almost 1,700 years ago by the actions of two men. The Roman Emperor Constantine committed a portentous act. He unified his empire by promoting Sunday as the day of Yahshua's resurrection and outlawed the use of the biblical calendar by calculating Passover. 
This set in motion a series of reactions. Jewish leader Halil II responded in the persecution following his legislation by a modification of the biblical calendar. This supplanted the true Sabbath in the pagan Saturday. It was a chain of actions and reactions of epic proportion. The ramifications continue to this day with every Christian and Jew that worships by the Gregorian calendar. So here you have this Constantine with the help of Halal too, who has actually gone in to actually do away with the Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. Changing it from the biblical Sabbath day according to the calendar to the pagan Sabbath day according to the pagan calendar. Right, right. It was a calculated move. If you would, read this paragraph here. The result of Constantine's action actually favored the pagan faction of the empire. However, the corrupt bishops of Rome were able to present their actions as favorable to Christians. By the time of Constantine, apostasy in the church was ready for the aid of a friendly civil ruler to supply the warning force of coercion. The true lunar solar calendar handed down from creation and Moses was lost. So here you have that he has done away with the correct Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. If you would read this paragraph. In subsequent years, the Jews went through iron and fire. The Christian emperors forbade the Jewish computation of the calendar and did not allow the announcement of the feast days. Great says, the Jewish communities were left in utter doubt concerning the most important religious decisions as pertaining to their festivals. The immediate consequence was the fixation and calculation of the Hebrew calendar by Hillel the second. So, like we said, whereas Antiochus Epiphanes just came in and slaughtered everybody who kept the Sabbath day, Constantine just came in and changed it to a pagan day. So, it seems like maybe Constantine was even worse than Antiochus because he went in to the minds of people and changed that. When Antiochus was just killing them, Constantine changed their entire minds. Yeah, Antiochus' actions were so severe that the people who wanted to keep the Sabbath day correctly actually left town. They went to the mountains to live and obey their festivals according to the scripture. Well, when Antiochus changed the calendar, he confused people. And so now there are people who think they are obedient to the Father. They think they know who God is. But yet they are celebrating the Sabbath day according to pagan principles. And you remember how Antiochus Epiphanes wanted everybody to be like one people? Right. Go ahead and read that paragraph. Constantine desired unity. He achieved this goal through ecumenism and outlawing the use of the biblical calendar by remembering the death of Yahshua. Halil II desired the physical survivor of Judaism. He achieved his goal by compromising with paganism and modifying the biblical calendar. The result of this action and its accompanying reaction has been the assumption by multitudes that Saturday is the biblical Sabbath and Sunday is the day on which the Savior was resurrected. Thus, Christians and Jews have calculated their worship days using pagan solar calendation, neglecting the true Sabbath of Yahuwah. So, in the name of unity, he's changed the calendar? Mm. Well, you know, we read where um, they wanted everything to be one. One God, one religion. Again, we're seeing unity. And like Antiochus Epiphanes, who forbade the people from keeping our father's laws, Constantine forbade them from using the calendar, which is a very significant part of keeping the covenant, in the name of unity. Right. Well, we're going to come back to the changing of the calendar in a second. One more thing that I want to look at on this website is this paragraph here. If you would read that. But Halil did more than make known a 19-year cycle of intercalations that was, in all probability, used all along. He also transferred the observance of the ancient Sabbath from the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days of the lunar month to every Saturday of the Julian months. So here it is why the Jewish community celebrates on Saturday. Wow. Constantine said that the Christian Sabbath days would be on Sunday, 
while the Jewish community decided to go with Saturday. Right. But you see here, it was clear when the true Sabbath days were supposed to be. And you see that it is the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th, according to the lunar calendar. So whereas they knew the truth, they actually changed the Sabbath day. I wonder, did they, I guess, do it out of convenience for them? Well, we saw a few minutes ago that Halal did it because he was under persecution from Constantine. Mm. Constantine and his son were actually trying to kill all of the Jews who were keeping the laws. Now, is it true, and I think I heard this earlier, that Halal was a... Um, Sanhedrin? Sanhedrin. Well, he was actually the president of the Sanhedrin, which gave him the power to do all of this. Right. Mm, very interesting. Now, let's come back over to the book of Jubilees. But this time, let's look in chapter 6, where Moses talks about our father's calendar. If you would, read verse 32. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb his time from his days and from his feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day or disturb any feast. Now, Jubilees is one of the places that talks about the 364-day calendar, our Father's sacred calendar. And just like the book of Enoch, which gives details on how this calendar works, these books were removed from our Bibles with, I believe, the sole purpose of hiding the true calendar from our father's people, allowing them to change the calendar as they will. Mm -hmm. But then when you go on down, you see the result of this. Read verse 33. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from their order. And they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. So, like we read about in the first chapter of the book of Jubilees, our father knew that they would forsake and lose the Sabbath days and the feast days. Well, this is why. It's because they lost the father's sacred calendar. I'm just sitting here in amazement how this was planned so carefully how it was so wisely planned for the i believe maybe for the purpose of us um uh, neglecting these ordinances so that uh, because we know how important these feasts are to the father well you know constantine would have had the example of maccabees he mm -hmm. would have had that book to read yeah and i'm just sitting here also um just wanting to you know i know we're not finished with the with the class we have a lot more to go but to just say thank you um coach for uh, staying on the path of i want to say making us do the feast when many times i was like uh i don't think he knows what he's doing because you know it's everybody else is celebrating saturday and if we're walking with the truth we're supposed to be doing it like everybody else uh doing it on saturday and sunday yeah and sunday and now i'm like okay uh, thank you, Father, for, you know, downloading this information to him because, you know, it was so calculated and so cunningly done that even, I'm going to say, even the elect have been fooled. Oh, yeah, that's what it means when it says that the elect will be fooled in the end days. So, yeah, you give proper thanks to the, to our Father right. for imparting this information onto us. But even that was prophesied in the book of Daniel when he said that knowledge will increase in the end times. Mm -hmm. Well, we're learning now through the Third Testament of the Bible that it is only because of obedience to the laws do we actually get this knowledge right so don't thank me for this knowledge thank the obedience to the scripture because from what I understand that's all it takes and he will start to impart knowledge on all of us right but anyway before we finish up this chapter read verse 34 and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the new moons and the seasons and the Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. So while these pagans, these Gentiles, these Protestants and Catholics are blaming the Messiah for doing away with the laws and the commandments and the Sabbath days, that's not true at all. We see here the reason why it's because we have forgotten the Father's calendar. We have gone and adopted the Gregorian calendar, forgetting about the Messiah's 
calendar or the Father's calendar all together. And here is the result and why we don't know the Sabbath days or the new moon days or the feast days. Right. So when you hear those people say the Father did away with that, you know that they're lying. You know mm -hmm. that they don't know what they're talking about. Mm hmm. He did away with nothing. In fact, he told us that this was going to happen, knowing that we would read this scripture and then we would start to to work to recover those things that were lost. Right. And again, that's the purpose of this class. So let's jump over to the book of Isaiah and chapter 58 as it's talking about what happens when we forget about what those pagan Gentiles are talking about and start to remember the Sabbath day? If you would, read verse 13. If thou turn away thy feet from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed them with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, would you remember in the other scriptures, in Ezekiel and in Exodus, we were told that if we didn't keep the Sabbath day, then we wouldn't know the Lord? Right. Well, you see here, it's saying that, that if we start to obey the Sabbath day again, mm -hmm. that it says that we will learn to take delight in the Lord. Wow. We won't be appalled by his laws. Right. We won't find his scripture detestable anymore. Mm -hmm. We won't hate his covenant like the Gentiles do. Right. Mm -hmm. We won't say his law is no longer prevalent. It's no longer um, active today. But if we don't, let's jump back over here to the book of Jubilees in chapter 23 and see what it says. If you would, start at verse 18. Behold, the earth shall be destroyed on account of all their works. And there shall be no seed of the vine and no oil, for their works are altogether faithless. And they shall all perish together, beasts and cattle and birds and all the fish of the sea on account of the children of men. This is talking about the end times here. Mm -hmm. If you will, go on to 19. And they shall strive one with another, the young with the old and the old with the young, the poor with the rich, the lowly with the great and the beggar with the prince on account of the law and the covenant. For they have forgotten commandment and covenants and laws, and feasts, and months, and Sabbaths, and jubilees, and all judgments. So here it is, we see the Sabbath day, for, or forgetting the Sabbath day, is one of the reasons behind the tribulation. Yeah. Why this earth has to go through such a purification process? Mm -hmm. Well, it is after that purification that all of those people who reject the laws and the covenant will be gone away. And everybody on the planet will be keeping the covenant and the feast days and the Sabbath days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a lot of times when you're talking about things that are important towards the Father, you hear about the feast, you hear about uh, the Ten Commandments, but very rarely do you just hear about the Sabbath, you know, and being this one day that's set apart. But what we're seeing now, what we're studying, what we're learning in this class is that the Sabbath is just important as doing all those other feasts. Just doing that one day is just as important. I would argue, based on everything I know, that the Sabbath is the most important commandment in all of the Bible. And I've heard you say that. And I'm like, uh, I don't think so. You know, you got tabernacle. That's pretty important. But from what I'm learning now, what I'm seeing now in this class, yeah, I, I would say that, yeah, you were probably right. And then when you remember Jasher and how that was the first law or the first rule that he had them to institute even before the Passover, mm -hmm. even before the Exodus where they keep in the Sabbath day. And then also, Coach, the so Sabbath day is this only set apart day that's including in this Ten Commandments, you know. Yeah. It's not, you know, he didn't include tabernacles. He didn't include uh, unleavened bread, Passover, but the Sabbath was included. The Sabbath day is the only statute that's also included in the commandments. Right. So next, do we want to talk about when it is or do we want to talk about what it is we're supposed to do on that day? Let's talk about first. Let's talk about what it is we're supposed to do on that day. Um, I, we've laid the foundation as to that it's important. Now let's talk about how. 
we're supposed to keep it and what are we supposed to do? Because I have a lot of questions. Okay, now let's touch back on Isaiah chapter 58 where he says, Turn away from doing thy pleasure on the Sabbath day and to take the time to call the Sabbath day a delight and honorable. Yeah. Then let's glance on Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10 where it says, And thou shalt not do any work on that day. And let's come to Jubilees chapter 50, which is an entire chapter dedicated to the Sabbath day. You see that in verse 6? Mm -hmm. And behold the commandment regarding the Sabbath. I have written them down for thee and all the judgments of his laws. And in this section, we hear about all of the rules associated with the Sabbath day. Wow. At least the ones that's not written on our heart. Mm -hmm. But if you would, go ahead and read verse 7. Six days shall thou labor, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no manner of work, ye and your sons, and your men servants and your maid servants, and all your cattle, and the sojourner also who is with you. So one of the main things that we've seen over and over is not to work on the Sabbath day. Yeah. But that's not the only rule. And in verse 8, we see the repercussions from working on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And the man that does any work on it shall die. Whoever desecrates that day. So by working on the Sabbath day, we understand that it carries the death penalty. Mm -hmm. But don't be confused like Eve was mm. thinking that the second that you break the Sabbath day, you were going to die. Right. Remember that what we saw over in the other chapter in Jubilees that it has connections to the tribulation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, everybody who is breaking the Sabbath day is going to die during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. That's why there's going to be so much death and destruction is because that's going to be repayment day. So stop now. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And let's go on to see some of the other rules associated with it. Whoever lies with his wife. So being intimate with your spouse is forbidden on a Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. Whoever says he would do something on it. So that includes a meeting that you would have. This always reminds me of the job I used to have when we used to have a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. All of the managers would get together and would only talk about work. Well, if there wasn't for this stipulation in the rules, that would be a part of our Sabbath day is we would have meetings where we would just talk about the upcoming week. Yeah, what we're going to do, plan for that week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go on. That he will set out on a journey thereon in regard to any buying or selling. So here we are talking about journeying or traveling. Mm -hmm. We are forbidding from traveling on a Sabbath day. You mean I can't take that day and go down to the Walmart and just browse and shop and do my shopping on the Sabbath day? Not, not <laughs> according to our Father's way of keeping the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see Protestants today down at Walmart dressed in their suits every Sunday. Or, or the people who so-called are walking in the truth, uh, we take Saturday. And though we're, we don't do our shopping, you know, most people do their shopping and stuff on Saturdays. Yeah. That's the day where we do everything. That's actually forbidden to do on the Sabbath day. Any buying or selling whatsoever is, is not to be done on the Sabbath day. Or you're doing what it says here. You are desecrating the Sabbath day. And you are calling up on destruction to yourself. Whoever draws water thereon, which he had not prepared for himself on the sixth day. Now, this is important to understand here uh, where it's talking about preparing. Because that's a huge part of the Sabbath day is preparation. Mm -hmm. So if there's some reason that you have to actually draw water, you have to do so on the day before. Right. Mm -hmm. Whoever takes up any burden to carry it out of his tent or out of his house shall die. So this is talking about how we saw in the other chapters that even the sojourner in your land has to keep the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So they can't say Ooh, they're keeping the Sabbath day on this day, so I'm just going to take my work somewhere else and do it. Right. They are actually in violation of the Sabbath day right. by doing so. Or even having the sojourner uh, to do the work for you. Absolutely. Nobody is to work on that day, and you can't travel to somewhere else and do that work either. Read verse 9. You shall do no work whatever 
on the Sabbath day, save that you have prepared for yourselves on the sixth day. So, to again, talking about the preparation. Right. You know, it's it, you you have to prepare what it is that you're going to do leading up to the Sabbath day so that you don't actually do any work on the Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. So as to eat and drink and rest and keep Sabbath from all work on that day. So now like we were talking about the preparation and you do those things on the Sabbath day that you had prepared earlier. Well, you think about cooking and how some people cook with crock pots and prepare their food ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Well, there's somebody out here taking advantage of this rule who have done all of their food preparation the day before and on the day of the Sabbath day, they're just heating it up or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Warming up is definitely a different from sitting there cooking it. Absolutely. Because I believe you will agree there's a lot of work associated with cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you do all that work the day before and then all you have to do is just turn on the oven. Right. Or, you know, like you said, just switch that crock pot from off to on. Um, it's already prepared. It's already done. The work is already done. And that's what the Sabbath day is all about is preparing beforehand. But anyway, let's go on. And keep Sabbath from all work on that day. And to bless the Lord your God, who has given you a day of festival, and a holy day, and a day of the holy kingdom for all Israel in this day, among their days forever. So now that reminds us of what Isaiah chapter 58 was saying when it was saying to take delight in this day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So read verse 10. For great is the honor which the Lord has given to Israel that they should eat and drink and be satisfied on this festival day. Now, this is what we heard earlier about how it's illegal to fast on the Sabbath day. Mm. You can't cook on the Sabbath day, but you can't fast either. Mm -hmm. You have to actually eat on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And rest thereon from all labor which belongs to the labor of the children of men. Save burning frankincense and bringing oblations and sacrifices before the Lord for days and for Sabbaths. Now, you remember the priests and the Levites had responsibilities that they were supposed to do every day. Right. The daily sacrifice was to be done daily, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So that's the only work he's saying is to be done is the work that's done by those priests and by those Levites. Right. So they can't just come in and say, well, it is the Sabbath day. We can't do this. The Father has made... Uh, an exception that they can. Absolutely. Verse 11. This work alone shall be done on the Sabbath days in the sanctuary of the Lord your God, that they may atone for Israel with sacrifice continually from day to day for a memorial well-pleasing before the Lord, and that he may receive them always from day to day according to thou hast been commanded. Now, of course, these have spiritual meanings. Spiritual meanings? Everything has a spiritual meaning. Right. You have, in order to understand the scripture, you always have to look for the spiritual meanings. Mm -hmm. This goes along with the same thing that the Messiah was doing when he was healing people on the Sabbath day. Right. It's not a regular work that we're doing right. on the Sabbath day. Right. It is the work of the Lord that we're doing on that day. Yeah, I should have known you had more than one scripture to support it. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, something so serious, you've got to know what you're doing. Right. But anyway, go ahead. And every man who does any work thereon, or goes a journey, or tills his farm, whether in his house or any other place, and whoever lights a fire, or rides on any beast, or travels by ship on the sea, and whoever strikes or kills anything, or slaughters a beast or a bird, and whoever catches an animal or a bird or a fish, or whoever fasts or make war on the Sabbath. Look at all of these rules associated with the Sabbath day. They're just rules just telling us to sit down and rest. Sit down and rest. Absolutely. And when you take it. So let's look at these a little bit closer. Doing any work. Mm -hmm. Goes on a journey. So you can't go on a trip like we said. No tilling the farm on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. That should be obvious. Mm hmm whether in his house or any other place, mm -hmm. so you can't go to the neighbor's house or the neighbor's farm and do his tilling for him either on the Sabbath day. Right. Whoever likes a fire. So you can't light your fires on the Sabbath day. Okay, so how is this supposed to work? Well, I'm sure you know we have to light our fires and prepare our fires the day ahead of time. It's yeah. all about preparation. Mm -hmm. the, the thing about fires, you know, it may not seem so obvious. So let me expound on that a little bit. 
when it comes to making a fire, what all is involved? You have to get your wood together. Right. And, you know, we just now came up with the idea of lighters. Mm -hmm. Before then, they had to rub two sticks together. <laughs> right. So you can imagine how much work was involved with actually getting out there trying to create this fire. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't done the necessary preparation, it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially if you have... Um, um, implement weather it's a whole lot of work yeah it's a rain on your wood and stuff and then and then it says ride on any beast mm. well you remember that the beasts are supposed to rest too right I was gonna say why can't I ride on my horse on the Sabbath day well they're supposed to be resting too this Sabbath has been set aside for them as well yeah the animals have to rest too and it says travels by any ship on the sea Mm -hmm. You can't get on the airplane and say, I'm getting ready to go on a trip. You yeah. can't go on a trip on a <laughs> Sabbath day. Or, going back to that, getting in your car and going somewhere. Yeah, you can't. Absolutely. They didn't have cars back then. Just like they didn't have airplanes, all they had was ships. So, that's an excellent point there. Traveling in your car would actually would actually fall under this category. Mm -hmm. And the next one said, whoever strikes or kills anything. So, you can't beat the kids on a Sabbath day. Mm. You can't strike anything on the Sabbath day. Just like that squirrel this morning that was eating my pecans up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the Sabbath day. It's the new moon day. It's the Sabbath day. So that's the only reason why that squirrel will be there tomorrow. <laughs> but it's going to be a different story then. Right. Or slaughters a beast or a bird. So you can't slaughter animals. That's a lot of work associated with this. You notice all of these have something to do with taking you out of your rest period. Mm -hmm. You're not. You can't rest while you're slaughtering a beast mm -hmm. or a bird. Mm -mm. It's a lot of work. It's a. It's a whole lot of work. Just like catching an animal, it's work. Mm -hmm. Catching fish, you can't go fishing on a Sabbath day. Is what this is talking about. And then once again, where you said, whoever fasts or make war on the Sabbath day. You can't fast. You can't abstain from eating, or you can't make war on the Sabbath day. But this should remind you of the Book of Maccabees. <laughs> When they made a war against them on the Sabbath day, right. and they just fought back. Mm -hmm. And I believe the fact that they actually won that war was an indication that they were still yet obedient, mm -hmm. since the people was making war against them. But anyway, let's look at verse 13. The man who does any of these on the Sabbath shall die. And like I said, don't be like Eve, thinking that your death is going to come before the day, before the day ends. Right. Eve lived another 900 years before she suffered death for her action. Mm -hmm. So that the children of Israel shall observe the Sabbath according to the commandments regarding the Sabbath of the land, as it is written in the tablets, which he gave into my hands, that I should write out for thee the laws of the seasons, and the seasons according to the division of their days. So here we have the rules associated with the Sabbath day. So these are the things that we can or cannot do according, not, not something that we said, but according to the laws and according to the manuscript that the Father gave us to follow. And if you're wondering why this is, why is it so important to be resting on this day? Why is it so important to be sitting down like you say? Mm -hmm. Well, we're over here in chapter 46 of the book of Ezekiel. If you would, read verse 1. Thus said the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be open, and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. So here's the reason why our Father is telling us to sit down. Right. The inner court, of course we're talking about the spiritual temple now, that right. third temple that's built on our hearts. The inner court of that temple is open on the Sabbath day. And what happened when the people went into the inner court? What, what took place? Well, here is a pictorial diagram of the three temples or the three tabernacles. You have the heavenly tabernacle, the earthly tabernacle, and the spiritual tabernacle or the third tabernacle. We call it the third temple. Mm -hmm. But you see how similar they are. Right. You see how you have an outer court and then you have an inner court. And then, of course, you have the Holy of Holies that's through the veil. Well, in the inner court, you see the shoe bread, which would be a representation of the word of God or our ability to consume the word of God. Mm -hmm. You see the golden candlesticks in the inner court. Right. As well as the golden altar and the incense. 
that you can imagine all of the activities that goes on inside of that inner court. Right. Well, it is only on a Sabbath day that we are allowed to go in that inner court. Right. The inner court is the place, I would say, where the priests hung out at. Not only were the priests allowed in there, but other citizens were allowed in as well. Right. The only place that was forbidden to only the priests was the most holy place. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, David went in and actually got the shoe bread. Right. So he was in the inner court. Right. So the inner court is a place where that is open so that we can go and, I guess, make requests from our king. Absolutely. And if you remember, the Messiah did all of his healing on the Sabbath day. Mm. So healing takes place in that inner court. So this Sabbath day is very, very important. We have to get it right. Absolutely. And when we're looking over here at this tabernacle of man, we see the outer courts would be a representation of our carnal mind, mm. where we're talking about our senses like sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. Right. I believe what Clarence Larkin is trying to show us here is that the inner court is more associated with our soul. Right. Our right. imaginations, conscious, um, memory, reason, and our affection. And from what we learned in the Third Testament, that would also include intuition. Right. So the Sabbath day would be a day that we can get information intuitively. Mm. I call it a download day where our father portrays information to us. Right. So that's one of the main reasons that we should be sitting down on a Sabbath day so that we can get those divine inspirations on that day. Mm -hmm. If you're running around down at the Walmart mm -hmm. or even down at the church, you can't get those inspirations. Or even, or even, and this is important and I'm learning as well, um, I was taking the Sabbath day as my uh, self-care day, you know. You can get heavily involved in that. You know, you're washing your hair, you're giving yourself masks, you're giving yourself scrubs, you're cleaning your fingernails and toenails and all this other stuff. You ain't got, really got time to download or hear nothing, you know, because your mind is focused on something else. So, you know, it's a day of rest to just be at still and one with the Father. Absolutely. So that's what Ezekiel is talking about when he says that the inner court is opened on the Sabbath day. And he says something similar down there in verse 3. If you would, read that. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbath and in the new moon. So the Sabbath day is the day that we worship before the gates. Mm. So those that are forsaking the Sabbath day are forsaking this worship period. Mm -hmm. So now that we've laid the foundation, now that we know of some of the things that we are supposed to be doing and not doing on the Sabbath. Let's talk about when is the Sabbath day. When is the Sabbath day? And like we saw over there with Hillel too, before he changed it, it was on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th day of the lunar month. So first of all, we need to understand the lunar month. And you've done many, many, many classes on this including the one we did yesterday where we were looking at the new moons in the Bible, like in Psalms 81 and verse 3, where we found out that the new moons are the beginning of the new month. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, every time we see new moon in the Bible, we should be understanding that it's talking about the new month. Right. The new moon is the new month, and the new month starts with the new moon. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what the book of Jubilees was talking about when he says that when we get off from the Father's sacred calendar, we will forget the new moons. He's really telling us that we will forget how the months work. Right. And once you forget the months or know when the new month comes in, there's no way you can keep the Sabbath correctly. How can you know the eighth day of the month when you don't know the first day of the month? Right. Mm. So here's how our Father's sacred calendar works. You have the new moon, which is the first day of the month. And like we saw over in the book of Ezekiel, that's also a day when the inner courts are opened. Right. It's opened on the Sabbath day and it's opened on the day of the new moon. So you see that you have the new moon day or the first day of the month, 
which is an inner court day. And then on the eighth day is the Sabbath day. The 15th day is the Sabbath day, the 22nd and the 29th. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example of how this all works, we can come over to timeanddate.com and we can look at our current month. And what we have to do is scroll down to when it says that there is a new moon. But we have to be careful because man's new moon is a 0% moon. When we come over to Google and ask it to define what a new moon is, you'll see that it says that it is invisible from Earth. So when we see our calendars tell us when there is a new moon, it's talking about that time in which there is a 0% moon and can't actually be seen. But that's not how our father's calendar works. We learned over in the book of Enoch that you actually have to visibly see the new moon. Mm. That's why people go out to view the new moon every month. Right. Well, if you go out on the 12th, you won't be able to see the moon because it's only 0.2% illuminated. Mm -hmm. That's too dim of a moon and it's too low on the horizon. You'll never get the chance to see it. So you have to be able to see it. Yeah, you have to see it. So when your calendar tells you the date of the new moon, so what you'll do is you'll go out on the evening of the 12th to try to see the moon, and you won't be able to see that 0.2% of the moon, and you'll go back on the next night when you'll see a 1.7% moon illuminated. And you can see that one? Definitely can see that moon. 1% is a very small sliver of the moon. It still will be very tiny, but it will be visible to the naked eye. But you can only see that right after the sun goes down. And we know that the day starts at sunset. So when you see that small sliver of the moon on the 13th, you'll know that you have just begun the first day of the month. And until then, I would say, you know, to pay attention for your classes giving the new moon report until you learn how to successfully do it. And always check the classes that we have called How the Calendar Works because we don't want you to be dependent on us for this information. Right. We're actually trying to teach you how this works so that if and when the Internet is shut down, you will be able to make these determinations for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so on the evening of the 13th, which will be the first time you see the sliver of the moon, which would have been when Psalms was talking about blow the trumpets, that would have been all they would have done on the evening of the 13th. You have to remember, they didn't have flashlights or street lights back in those days, so they mostly only slept at night. But it is on the following day, during the daylight hours, is when they would have their new moon celebration. Right. Mm -hmm. They will have their dinners and their rest period and taking advantage of the opening of that inner court. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why it's so important that you understand that the day begins at sunset. Because those teachers who try to say that the day begins at sunrise, well, if that were true, that the day began at sunrise on the 13th, but yet, you can only see the new moon at sunset on the 13th. That means you have just missed the entire day. Yeah, you would have to wait. Mm. You, you would have to wait until nighttime to even know that you was on a new moon day. Mm -hmm. And how cruel is that? Mm -hmm. When you were fully expecting to have a new moon celebration, but you weren't able to do so because you couldn't see the new moon until the day was over. Right. You were hoping and waiting and preparing for your celebration and, you know, it's gone. Yeah. You come and they say, uh, <laughs> we ready for the new moon celebration. And they say the new moon day is over. It just ended. <laughs> and that's the case for those guys who teach that the day starts with the sunrise. Well, we have biblical proof that it starts at the sunset. And with the day starting at sunset, we have the entire evening to celebrate the new moon as well as the very next day, 24 hours, we recognize the new moon, the new moon day, and can take advantage of that very special time period. Yeah, especially this being one of the time periods um, when you have that one-on-one -on -one access to the Father, the opening of the inner court. 
Um, that's very important. That's very important. Right. So the way this works is you will blow the trumpets on the sighting of the sliver of the moon, declaring that that is the beginning of the first day of the month. And when the sun rises on the next day, you'll be in the midst of the new moon day, celebrating until sunset on that day. Of course, you're doing no work on that day because you're taking advantage of the inner courts being opened. And the first work day would actually be on the second day of the month. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get confused on that, so let me say it again. The first work day of the week is the second day of the month. And so you have day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and day seven. The first Sabbath day falls on the seventh day of the work week, which happens to be the eighth day of the lunar month. And you keep going forward every seven days, the Sabbath days fall on the eighth, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th day of every month. Okay, so I would say a lot of times the reason that people are try to justify or even doubt it is because the majority of the times these Sabbath days, the seventh day, fall on what we would consider a work day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So a lot of the times people say, well, that can't be the way that it's calculated because they have to go to work. They have to, to get in that car. They have to go, a lot of times, go out and buy. You know, a lot of times people have to go out and sell. We have people who are sellers. We have people who are buyers. We have people who are shoppers. You know, they have to do this. So, you know, what do they do? And this is in conflict with their Gregorian calendar? Right. Well, we saw just a few minutes ago what happens when you abandon the Father's calendar and you embrace the Gentile calendar. Mm -hmm. When the Father gave us these instructions, Israel wasn't going down and having a nine to five. I believe that we, since we're, you know, the Father called, called us to be a set apart people. And, you know, it's a, I guess it's a, it's a, is it a choice? But what do you do? I don't know. There is a such thing as the Lord's Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Sure, you may not know what it is, or you may not be able to keep it properly. You may have to keep it on some random day. Some will even have to keep it on a Saturday or a Sunday until the Lord makes a change in their life. Right. But when that change comes, you want to find out when the Lord's Sabbath day is, because that's the day when the inner courts are open. Yeah, if you make that effort, like coach did for our family um i believe that the father will see that effort and that he will allow so now we can keep the Lord's well Day definitely when i first started keeping a sabbath day i didn't have any autonomy i was working in the shipping department and i had to do exactly what they told me to do every day but i was still trying to keep the sabbath day doing no more than praying saying father forgive me for having to be down here at this at this workplace on the Sabbath day and he actually moved in my life and the next job that I got I could do what I want mm -hmm. I got what they what they call flexible a flexible schedule and I could set my own schedule and now you're in a position now where mm, I can keep them I can do them. Yeah, yeah I'm my own yeah, guy and guy. if that's part of the um, benefits of serving the Father. Remember that He wants to be our provider. He mm -hmm. wants to provide us with right, our food, right. clothing, and shelter. So, well, I believe what you're saying is that once we embrace the Father's way of doing things, yeah. then He put us in a position to where we can actually do it right. Right. But, you know, 20 years ago, that wasn't the case. Mm -mm. You know, He had to mm -mm. do what they said do, right. but by, you know, at least trying to do it our Father's way, He has made a way for us to do it the correct way today. And for you guys, I would say the same thing. Yep. Well, we hope you got everything you need to know about the Sabbath day in this class. <laughs> we said we were going to put it all in one video. I learned a whole lot. Um, a whole lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I hope everybody else did too. If you did, please leave us a comment. Let us know, you know, how you are learning. And if you have any questions, put them down there as well. And if you would, please hit that like button. Yeah.
We love the comments and we appreciate the likes. Yeah. And shalom. Shalom.